talked about how you really made your career on proving people wrong. Like you were an underdog a lot and you came and you proved them wrong. Here, coming in, you're the biggest favorite in the card. So, how is it just that's, to be on the other side of things? That's the first I've heard of that. That's surprising, to be honest. I didn't know that. That's and, a surprise to me. Yeah, and do you care? Like, is it something that you look at, like, I'm a favorite or? Um, well, it just means people are betting on me to win. Yeah. Which is cool. Everybody thinks I'm going to win, but I still have to get in there and fight it and try and win, you know? But. You know, it's, it's the least of my worries. Yeah. And you were, as a headliner, there are added obligations, a busy fight week for you. How has that been for you when you've been here before, you did all this media and you're coming back and you're doing all this media? <coughs> How is it different for you, this particular experience, being a headliner in Brazil? Well, now I'm doing a lot more media, a lot more obligations, three times the work as everybody else, because I'm doing English, Spanish, and Portuguese. True. Uh, so it's just a lot of work. <laughs> At least you don't have to do the weight anymore. The weight yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess it just evens itself out from now. You know, I'm not worried about the weight, but I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> you know? And how has the adjustment to the time been? This is something that I think a lot of fighters deal with when they come fight in Brazil because uh, our cards are sometimes very late in the night. How has that adjustment been for you? It's been a little rough. Uh, I have to train. I've been training at 3 a.m. in the morning since I got here. Uh, the first day was rough. I did not. I was gonna pull out. No, I wasn't gonna pull out. <laughs> but I was like, man, I'm not supposed to feel this way, you know. And yeah. it, it was just hard getting my body to go at, at that at that time. Um, yesterday we trained again. Felt a little bit better. Felt a lot better, to be honest. And so I feel like by Saturday my body will be well acclimated to to being here and and the time change. Okay. And uh, one thing that's interesting is that now when we credit you middleweight fighter, welterweight fighter, <laughs> I don't think you don't know. anyone really knows because you have said it yourself, you're kind of just trying to uh, wait it out after this fight and you had mentioned that uh, you were thinking about the title, right? So whatever sure. division showed you a Absolutely. clear path. But now, George St. Pierre is back, things have changed. How do you, do you see a clearer path in either division? Mm, to be honest, not yet. Not yet. I think after this fight, I'm going to weigh out my options and see what what route I can go, what route is is best for me. Yeah. How do you feel about George and Pierre coming back? Oh, I love it. You know, yeah. he's my favorite fighter, and I followed him since I was 15, 14, 15. Excuse me, 14, 15 years old, and admired him when he was in the UFC as a champion, and um, he's probably one of the reasons why I, I started training MMA. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm very excited to see George back. I don't like the fact that he jumped in line in front of Yoel Romero, but it's GSP. <laughs> <laughs> and you said you've admired him forever. So uh, if it ever came to a point where you have to fight him, how would that experience be for you? That'd be an honor. That'd be an honor to share the cage with, with that man, for sure. And with Vitor, it's probably similar. You're so much. You're. He's not even that old, but he's been at it forever. Oh yeah. <laughs> You've probably seen him. Twenty forever. years. He's twenty years in the game, and that's. I can't even imagine that. You know. Um, you know. He's, he's he's had a lot of great accomplishments, um, but Vitor was never one of the guys where I was like, oh man, I love the way you know. I mean, he, he, he. I mean, he's a good, great, great fighter. His fights are well documented, uh, and I respect him a lot as a fighter. And does fighting a guy with, I mean, obviously he's not at his best right now, but just his name, the weight that he carries, does it mean something to you, like in a different level, maybe more of a, you know, an emotional accomplishment of something of yeah, that sort? Yeah, for sure. This is a big deal for me. This is a big deal to fight a guy like Vitor. I know how much of a big deal he is. Uh, you know, and I give him the respect he, that he deserves, but once that cage door closes, that respect is gone for 25 minutes. And a lot of, I think it's obvious whenever people are breaking down Vitor fights, it's kind of mm -hmm. like he's striking, he's dangerous in the first round, like it's got a very clear storyline there. For sure. But you've been telling, at least Brazilian media, that you're looking for a knockout there. Is it? Uh, people say things to promote fights, but sure. is it for you an interesting idea, just maybe beating him at where his best. Yeah, it'd be a, it'd be awesome. I'm very confident in my my ability is to strike with him too. So uh, for sure, I'm looking to get a knockout. But I'm also not going to be 
dumb to where I'm going to play just his game. No, we're going to do MMA. This is MMA, so we're going to do MMA. And when people talk about Vitor right now, um, coming into this fight, they talk a lot about seeing an aging fighter, like maybe a guy who's not looking as good as he sure. looked in the past. But which Vitor do you see? Which Vitor did you prepare for? Yeah, I prepared for the best Vitor. You know, I know he wants. He's coming off two or three losses. I know nobody wants to lose three times in a row, um, and he's kind of got his back up against the wall. You know, in this fight, so I feel like whenever somebody has their back up against the wall, that's when they react the hardest and react the quickest. Um, so I expect the best version of Vitor uh, on Saturday.